bad things, tribulation, evil things in the world. Somebody asked me years ago, said, are things going to get better or worse? I said, the answer is yes. Yeah, things will get worse, but things will also get better for the people of God. Isaiah chapter 60, arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness will cover the earth and gross or extreme darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Lord, we thank you for arising upon your people today. Lord, in America, in Canada, in Ireland, the islands of the sea, Lord, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Africa, Lord, I thank you for arising upon your people, that promise in Isaiah chapter 60. You said, Lord, that when darkness covers the earth and gross or extreme darkness, and he's talking about moral and spiritual darkness, and yes, we see it today. We see the gross, the moral, uh, the, the, the gross, extreme moral and spiritual darkness all around us. But Almighty God said at that time, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Lord, I pray for the, for, for, for the Christians across America. Lord, that we will turn our eyes upon you, that we will not become discouraged and despond by the gross darkness that we see. But Lord, we will turn our eyes upon you and Lord, we will be recipients of your promise that the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. Hey, that's revival, folks. That's what throughout history has been described as revival. It is said that England was a very dark time in the early 1700s, a very dark time. Uh, one writer said that that it seemed that every other house was a grog shop. That's what we would call a, a bar or a tavern. Uh, and, and it was just a, a time of gross immorality and of moral darkness. But here is something. We're talking about the Lord shall arise upon you. But there were some people, like we're praying today, God stirred up some people to pray. And there were some people begin to pray and they were church folks, but they weren't experiencing the life and power of God, but they became hungry for it and they began to pray. John Wesley tells about, and I'm reading this to, to, to encourage your faith, that during this dark time in England, these people begin to pray, they begin to read their Bibles. I think it was George Whitfield who was one of the early Methodists talked about reading his Bible on his knees <laughs> and praying over every word and sentence. And this is from John Wesley's journal. I believe this is 1739. It was a New Year's. They were having a New Year's watch night service, an all night of prayer. These are some Anglicans, what we would call Episcopalians. Yeah, may God pour out his, his spirit on Episcopalians. Hopefully the Pentecostals and Charismatics will get in on it. Baptist, Methodist, even Catholics. But these Anglicans, 70 of them, they were meeting together for an all-night prayer meeting, ushering in the new year, 1739. John Wesley afterwards described it in his journal. He said, at about three in the morning, as we were continuing instant in prayer, the power of God came mightily upon us. Oh, what is that? That's Isaiah 60. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. At about three o'clock in the morning, the power of God came mightily upon us insomuch that many cried out for exceeding joy. In spite of the troubles and tribulation, in the world today, I pray that the power of God will come. And there may be even some today who are watching on Facebook, listening on the Breakout Prayer Network, that you will cry out with exceeding joy. 
<laughs> I, I guess you could have called that a laughing revival. Y'all, John Wesley does talk about a joyful laughter in his, in his journal in the early 1700s. He said, many cried out for exceeding joy. Have you had, have you experienced exceeding joy lately? Many cried out for exceeding joy and many fell to the ground. And by the way, they didn't know they were supposed to have catchers. Never mentions it. You know why we have catchers? Because we have professionalized and institutionalized the work of the, the move of the Holy Spirit. Oh, may God help us. Many cried out for exceeding joy and many fell to the ground. He said, we broke out, all 70 of us, we broke out with one voice. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. Yeah, that's a historical example. This was, you could say this was the beginning of the great Methodist revival in the early 1700s in England that even secular historians will say that saved England, that transformed the British Isles and saved England from a bloody revolution such as happened in neighboring France. Across the English Channel in neighboring France, they had a bloody revolution, an atheistic bloody revolution, the French Revolution. In England, they had revival. Oh, I pray today, yes, in America, in Canada. And I'm praying for the Western world, not to leave out anybody in Asia because Yes, we're, we're believing God for, for, for mighty outpourings in Asia. The earth belongs to the Lord. But in the Western world, the Western world has known Christianity, like I'm reading about there in England, but has now departed from it for the most part. The nations, their leaders, they, the political leaders, the culture, the educational systems, they have departed. They have renounced the Christian faith. They have renounced the Lordship of Jesus and turn to their own ways and to ungodliness. And so, Lord, we pray for revival in the Western world, throughout Europe, in England, in Ireland, in Canada, in America, in Mexico, down into Central and South America. God, we pray for a mighty outpouring of your spirit that will turn the nations back to you, O oh God. Yes, we pray for revival in this hour. Lord, even as your power came upon, as John Wesley described it, the power of God at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> they experienced a suddenly. This was not something that they planned. This was not something that they strategized. This was not something that they had um, a, a, announced in the local papers. This was something that came spontaneously, dynamically from the presence of God. As we were continuing in instant in prayer at three o'clock in the morning, the power of God came suddenly upon us. We need something to come from outside of ourselves. The church in America is very good at producing exciting events that we call revival. But what is needed today is not another man-made revival. We need the power of God to come once again, that sound from heaven, the power of God to come. And that's why we're praying. Lord, we pray for real revival to come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, we pray for the real power of God to descend upon your church, descend upon your people. And even upon this prayer time today, we pray that your power will come. Oh, yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revive your people, revive your church, Lord. Throughout America, Canada, Ireland, England, throughout Europe, Poland, Bulgaria, Sweden, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, all the nations, Lord of Western and Eastern Europe, and Italy. Pray for mighty revival in Italy. May revival even break out at the Vatican, real revival from heaven. As people turn their hearts to you with hunger in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for it, Lord. There is nothing hard for you. 
We give you praise. We give you glory and honor in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Hey, so glad those of you are on today. I see Patsy Grom in Paris, Charles Nadlali Hicks in Paris, Simone Zgion in North Carolina, Nadim Asif, Nadim, so glad you're on. What country are you in? We want to pray for you and pray for revival in your country. So now let's pray for, we, we, we just prayed for what we call the Western world. Now let's pray for, for Africa, for Asia. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And God wants to bless his people all over the world. He wants to pour out his spirit. Let's go ahead and let's pray for India. Sue and I, I've been to India twice. Sue and I went there together in 2006, saw such powerful moves of the Holy Spirit. Precious people in India who love God, who love, who are followers of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the Indian continent, the Indian nation. A billion people, a billion souls. Oh God, how that nation needs a revival, a real Jesus revolution. And Lord, we pray for the Christians. We pray for those we know, Lord, there in Northeast India. We pray for Kitbok. We pray for physical strength and health for him in the name of Jesus. We pray for his son, Sean, his daughter, his family. And God, we pray for the churches that Kitbok was involved in and birthing and founding and the Bible schools and the, the, the college, Christian college that, that they have birthed. God, may they experience great revival in this hour. Lord, as a new generation is coming on the scene there in Shalong and Megalea, Lord, we pray that they will experience a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that they will not just be following in some outward form and tradition, but they will have the same experience of your life and your spirit that their grandparents and grandmothers had. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for mighty revival in Assam, in Megalaya, in Nagaland, in those northeastern provinces of India, those northeastern states. We pray for great revival to be poured out today. And Lord, all across India today, we pray for revival. God, we pray for, for genuine outpourings of your Holy Spirit. God, we pray for protection for your people. Oh God, we pray for a mighty mass harvest of souls throughout India in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, my friends, in, in, in early Christianity, they saw mass movements. Entire people groups coming to Jesus. This is what Paul was referring to when he said to the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and your house. And, and, and there in that same community, they were hosted by a wealthy businesswoman by the name of Lydia. And she believed their message, believed on the Lord and she was baptized, the Bible says, and her house. And when the Bible talks about a house or a household, it's not talking about a nuclear biological family. Uh, the, the, the household included servants, slaves, extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, and so on. A, a household could easily be 100, 200 people, depending on how wealthy the householder was. And here is a woman, Lydia. She was the uh, the head of a house. I don't know if she was a widow or just uh, as a single woman and as a sex a successful businesswoman. Uh, the people that she cared for grew, and her servants grew. And but we don't know how many was in her house, but they all came to Jesus. <laughs> her entire household, and then the jailer. His entire household came to Jesus. Mass movements. And we hear, uh, we, we, we even read about entire regions coming to Jesus. And uh, we're, we're, we're praying, folks, but I got to share this with you to, to encourage your faith because I want us to pray for mass movements of different people groups to come to Jesus. 
coming to Jesus in mass. And I'm not talking just about a, which is good. Yeah, I hope there are some large festivals or crusades, whatever you want to call them, where hundreds respond. But I'm talking about an entire region multiplied thousands, even apart from some crusade or Christian festival coming to Jesus. There was an individual by the name of Boniface. I believe he, he, he was from, from Great Britain and he went to what was present day Germany. And uh, this was, was, would have been around, I believe it was in the eighth century. I have this written up uh, in one of my books and, and I know I wrote it up in an article, but, but here's what I want to tell you. The people at that time, they were very pagan and they worshiped spirits. They believed in, in demons. And uh, the, in their minds, the, the most powerful demon was the one they called the thunder god. And there was a massive oak tree. They, they called it the oak of the thunder god. And uh, they would gather at this oak of the thunder god, uh, you know, for their religious exercises and paying homage and devotion to the thunder god. And Boniface came there and he began to uh, tell them about the gospel. And at first, you know, he, he, it was something new. And so they listened. But then, you know, as they heard it several times, you know, they just finally they just went on their way and they weren't paying any attention to him. And months went by and he realized he wasn't getting anywhere. And so I'm sure he did this after much prayer. He called for a gathering at the Oak of the Thunder God. And so hundreds, perhaps thousands of these people gathered there at the Oak of the Thunder God, according to Boniface's request that they come. And so after the crowd was there and he decided that all were, the, you know, the crowd was large enough, he pulled out an ax and he began to chop away <laughs> at their sacred Oak of the Thunder God. And the people gasped. They, they were in awe. They couldn't believe he was doing this. They expected him to fall over dead at any moment. But he kept chopping away, chopping away, chopping away until their sacred oak of the thunder god came crashing to the ground. Boniface then, with some help from others, he chopped up the tree, sawed and sliced, and he built a small Christian chapel out of the Oak of the Thunder God. And after this, there was a great mass movement of that entire region. They turned from their paganism to Jesus. Why? Because by that bold act of faith, they realized that this thunder god and the other demons whom they feared so much, they came to realize that they really didn't have any power. <laughs> and so there was this mass movement. There's some charismatics today that live in fear of demons and witchcraft. They need to understand what Bonavist knew and what these former pagans learned. The devil has no real power except to deceive you and make you think he has power and put you in fear. And then your fear opens you up to the demonic attacks. So Lord, it, yeah, so there was this mass movement after this, a mass movement, the entire region began turning to Jesus. <clears throat> God spoke to me those words, mass movement about 12 13 years ago the only time i've ever really heard it in this sense and i'll tell you the sense of it we lived in tulsa oklahoma and i was a and, and this was sue was in the midst of bringing forth her vision now this is going to lead us into prayer now so bear with me this is to, to give us a basis for faith of what we're going to pray for a mass movement we're going to pray for a mass movement from Islam to Christianity. And I was awakened, unusual for me, I was awakened at 3 a.m. one morning, lying in bed, wide awake. And I was, obviously I wasn't going back to sleep, so I, I quietly got out of bed, went into a, another room, sat down on the couch, 
I didn't turn on any light. There was a street light and the, the, the light from the street light was streaming through the window. So there was some light. But I sat there enjoying the stillness and the quietness of the early morning. And I sat there just lifting my heart up to God and talking to him. And in the midst of this, all of a sudden, the only way I can describe it is my insides became. It felt like supernaturally still and quiet. And I knew that I needed to stop talking. I needed to listen. <laughs> And I believe as clear as I've ever heard the Holy Spirit speak, I heard these words. I want you to be more identified with Sue and what she is doing. There was a moment of silence. And then I heard this message has the power to begin a mass movement from Islam to Christianity beginning with the women. And I'm just going to say this boldly today. Those of you who are fighting against this message, you're fighting against God. You're fighting against a key to world evangelism that God has put in our hands. This message I heard the Holy Spirit say has the power to begin a mass movement from Islam to Christianity beginning with the women. There's the, there's the message he's, he was talking about that Sue published last year, summed up everything that she has done, 500 pages in the spirit were equal. God said this message has the power to begin a mass movement from Islam to Christianity beginning with the women. So we're going to pray right now that God will get this message into the hands of of people all over the Islamic world into the hands of Christians and even Muslims who will read the message and share it, come to Christ themselves and lead others to Jesus. So Lord, we thank you today for this message, this message that when you died on the cross and shed your blood, women were redeemed equally as men. That is why you appeared first to Mary Magdalene when you came out of the tomb. You didn't appear first to Peter <laughs> or John or the high priest. You appeared first to Mary Magdalene, making a statement that women had an equal voice in this new covenant, in this new kingdom. And now, Lord, you have said that this message has the power to begin a mass movement from Islam to Christianity. Lord, I pray that you will find ways to get this message into the hands of Muslims all over the world. You said it would begin with, with, with Muslim women. So, Lord, we pray that you will get this message into the hands of Muslim women all over the world. And, God, we pray for a mass movement from the Islam to Christianity. We know it's a possibility because you spoke those words to me. And we know that in past history, there have been mass movements from paganism and other religions to you. And so, Lord, I pray in this hour, a mass movement. Lord, may we even see such in America today. God, a mass movement from Islam to Christianity because Christianity is the truth. And Jesus, you are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. So, Lord, we pray for mass movements all over the world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This earth does not belong to the devil. Yes, Satan is called the God of this world system because of the influence but Jesus at his death at the cross and resurrection, he finally, completely and finally defeated Satan. He defeated the prince of this world, put his foot on his neck. And the prophecy in Genesis chapter 3 was fulfilled where Jesus said to Eve, I will put in between, between your seed and the serpent's seed. He will bruise your heel, talking about the seed of the woman, which is Jesus. <laughs> he will bruise your heel. A bruise on, on a heel, that, that is a minor temporary wound. But he will bruise your head. 
In bruising the old serpent's head, he'll get a wound on his heel. But he will wound his head, which is a final mortal wound. And Jesus fulfilled that prophecy at his cross and resurrection. He bruised the head of Satan. He defeated him. And now, Lord, we pray thy kingdom come. Oh, God, we pray thy kingdom come, O oh Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, sir, on earth as in heaven. May your name be hallowed throughout the earth. May the name of Jesus be lifted up and hallowed. Lord, from Jerusalem to Timbuktu, from New York City to Rio de Janeiro, from Nairobi to Lahore, Pakistan, to New Delhi, and all over this world, to, to Nairobi, to Ghana, to Accra, and all over the world, to Johannesburg, Lord, may the name of Jesus be hallowed this day. And Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done this day upon earth as it is in heaven. May your name be hallowed. May the masses turn their eyes upon Jesus in whom alone is salvation, in whom alone is forgiveness of sins, in whom alone is the promise of heaven and eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Hey, yes, praying that the world would turn their eyes upon Jesus. You want to sing with me? Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Sing it again. Oh, turn your eyes. And we sing this to the, to the world. We sing this to the world today. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory. Yes, the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Yes, the things of earth will go strangely in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. When we turn our eyes upon you and we see you, Lord, in all your majesty and all of your glory, in all your plans and all your purposes, surely, Lord, the things of this world grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. We thank you for it, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for that mass movement, those mass movements turning to you in Jesus' name, realizing that there is no hope in humanity, no hope in man, no hope, oh God, in this present world. Thank you, Lord, for multitudes turning to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Lord, revive the churches. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we're praying for mass. I haven't gotten past that yet out of my heart. Lord, thank you for, yes, great mass movements. Give your people great boldness to be your witnesses, even in the face of persecution. I believe that the Holy Spirit is highlighting that. I was going to read a passage from the Bible about mass movements. They're, they're in Jerusalem. It talks about multitudes. They're in the early chapters of Acts. Multitudes. It says, among whom many of the priests were turning to the Messiah. Multitudes. Mass movements. Thousands turning. Peter, Peter saw when he preached there on the day of Pentecost, he saw 3,000 come to Christ. That's a mass movement. A few days later, 5,000. And then it says that the Lord was adding daily to the church. That there was a mass movement there in Jerusalem, there in Israel. In the early days of the gospel, there was a mass movement. And we've seen those examples of those again throughout history. Could we see one today? Some might say, well, no, this is the day of the great fallen away. There's, well, let me tell you something. Both can be true. It's true. Entire denominations have fallen away, have apostatized and fallen away. Entire denominations from the truths of the gospel. But that doesn't mean that there, there, there's a whole world out there which there could come a whole new. While some are apostatizing, there could be a whole movement of new ones coming into the kingdom. Lord, may it be, <laughs> may it be Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. May it be in this hour. God, his entire denominations are turning from you and apostatizing. May we see mass movements coming to you all over the world. As you promised, for you said it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I see that as a mass movement. Hallelujah. In the last days, God said. So never forget, both can be happening at the same time. That's the basis on which someone asked me one time, talking about the end times. Are things going to get better? Are things going to get worse? I said, the answer is yes. <laughs> oh, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. God, we thank you. Thank you for fresh outpourings of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for visiting your people, and your churches once again. God, and I pray for all those churches in America that are turning to you, that are becoming tired of the religious routine of just going through the outward formal motions of, of the Christian religion, Lord, as they turn to you with all of their hearts. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for a, a fresh sound from heaven. And as John Wesley recorded, in their New Year's Eve service, 1739, the, the power of God descended mightily upon us. May your power uh, descend once again upon your church and your churches throughout America and Canada. 
May your power descend once again upon the churches of Canada. May your power descend once again, we pray specifically for King's Church, for this association of churches in uh, in New Brunswick and the Maritimes. We pray, God, for mighty revival that your power will descend upon them in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for mass movements turning to you in Canada. Lord, we pray for Pete and Shauna Stubbs and their three daughters. We pray for your protection around them and we pray for your boldness and that your power will flow in them and through them. Having a mighty, powerful impact there in St. Stephen, that county in the province and Charlotte County and across the border into Maine. May they see great and mighty revival in the name of Jesus. May the power of God descend mightily upon them even today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, wisdom and power. Lord, would you send your power? We need the wisdom to know how to, how to handle it, how to flow with it. So thank you for both power and wisdom for your churches today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to God. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, we just bless and praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now let's pray for, let's pray for what's happening in the Middle East today. There is no question that Hamas is an evil, wicked, demonic. I can't imagine any human being, even a, a pagan human being, do the, doing the kind of things, the atrocities these people have done, which leads me that they are demonic. Even in their charter. They state that the reason for their existence is to kill Jews and destroy the state of Israel. And, and, and these people, these poor, blinded people, and I'll, I'll, I'll say even the more moderate ones who are calling for what they call a two-state solution, that they might live in peace. Why don't you start calling upon Hamas to create an entirely new charter in which they agree to respect the right of the Jews for a homeland. No, you're not doing that. And they're not going to do that. They are hell-bent on destroying, killing every Jew and destroying the state of Israel. That is why Israel cannot afford to show any mercy at all upon Hamas. Now, the, the Palestinian people, that's a different problem. There are e or even, there are a small minority, there are a few Christians there in Palestine. And even in the Gaza Strip, we need to pray for them today. And so we pray, let's, let's begin to pray. We'll pray for Israel. And I don't mind praying for, for Hamas to be destroyed because it is an evil entity. It's an evil organization that is committed to murder and mayhem. So, Lord, we pray for Israel today. Lord, you brought them back to that land that you promised their father Abraham. And this is just one scripture. Genesis chapter 17, God spoke to Abraham the father of the Jewish state, the Jewish people. After he had come out of an area of Iraq, first of all, settled in a place called Haran, which is like the northern part of Syria, eastern part of Turkey today. And then God moved him down and said, I want you to come to a land that I will show you. I want you to leave everything, your, your family, leave everything. I'm, I'll, and, and I'll make of you a great nation. And I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. 
And Abraham obeyed and he came into that land, which is modern day Israel, the Middle East. By the way, the, the land that God promised encompasses much more than what we're what Israel possesses today. But here's what God said to Abraham. I will establish my, I'll establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. Who's the covenant with? Just with Abraham? No, your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So there, God promised that land. So we're praying according to the will of God today. Lord, we ask you, God, to intervene for Israel today. God, give them victory over the enemies that have come to destroy them. Give them victory, I pray, oh God. I pray that the... Uh, th that these Hamas fighters, that their hearts will melt with fear, that there will be panic. God, you have done this in, in times past. And so, Lord, we pray that, that, that their resistance will melt away like snow under a hot sun. And God, we ask you to give Israel victory, give the, the IDF the Israeli Defense Forces give them a, a pronounced, complete, absolute and final victory over this evil, demonic entity called Hamas. Give them victory, we pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Facebook, don't dare block this, what I'm saying. It's the truth. Check it out. It's the truth. What I'm saying is true. Lord, give Israel victory in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for the poor Palestinians who are caught up in this. God, we pray that there will be a, somehow that there will, would come a mass movement. That their eyes would be open to know who Jesus really is. Lord, we pray for the Palestinian people. We pray for those Palestinian Christians. God, who are caught in the middle, they're ignored by Western Christians because we're so, and rightly so, focused on supporting Israel that we forget about the Palestinian Christians and they're despised by their Muslim neighbors. And so, Lord, we pray for the Palestinian Christians today. God, we ask you to give them strength. We ask you to make your presence very real to them. We ask you, oh God, to supernaturally appear to them, encourage them. And we pray, oh God, that your power that you promised, that your power would come upon them. And Lord, may they be vehicles. May you use them as instruments for a mass movement among the Palestinian people, a mass movement from Islam to Christianity, we pray. God, strengthen the Palestinian Christians in this hour. Give them supernatural boldness. Give them supernatural protection and deliverance. We pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, oh, Lord, we thank you for doing it. We thank you, God. We pray for the peace, the shalom of Jerusalem Psalm 122, 6, pray for the shalom. That's more than just a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. It has to do with the overall well-being, the peace, freedom from turbulence, freedom from turmoil, peace, well-being, prosperity. <laughs> pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. So, Lord, we pray for the shalom and the peace of Jerusalem today. We pray for the shalom and the, and the peace of all of Israel. And we pray, God, that there will be revival in Israel and that their eyes will be opened to the true Messiah, Jesus. In this hour, we pray. 
And God, I pray for your shalom and your peace upon everyone who is watching this live stream today. Whether it's on Facebook Live, whether it's on uh, Bib the Biblical Awakening YouTube channel, whether it is on Vimeo. Lord, I pray that that your shalom, your peace, your well-being will be upon them today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your shalom, for your peace, for your blessing, for your well-being, for your prosperity, for your provision, your protection. Thank you for your shalom, O oh God, not only for Israel, not only for the natural descendants of Abraham, but thank you for your shalom for the, for the spiritual descendants of Abraham, for your people. For yes, that promise belongs to us too, for it says in, Paul said in Galatians, I think it's chapter 3, he said, if you, if you belong to Christ, if you belong to Christ, do you belong to Christ? I belong to Christ. Christ means Messiah. I belong to the Messiah, Jesus. And Paul said, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yes, the shalom belongs to you as well. Lord, as we pray for this, your shalom over the Middle East, over beginning in Israel, beginning in Jerusalem, in Israel, I pray for your shalom in your church. I pray for your shalom among the people who recognize you, Jesus, as their Lord, as their Messiah, as their Savior. I pray for your prosperity, your shalom, your peace, your well-being. And we thank you for it, O oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I believe God is working today, folks. I believe our prayers are being answered. So I'm going to sing this right now. His peace is flowing like a river. His peace is flowing like a river. It's flowing out to you and me. It's flowing out into the desert. It's setting all the captives free. Let's sing, His love is flowing. His love, it is flowing like a river. Flowing out to you and to me. It's flowing. To the desert, and it set all the captives free. And hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. setting all the captives free. Thank you all on the Breakout Prayer Network for being with us today. And thank you, Dale and Jean Gentry. Thank you, Cheryl Ortiz. We're going to go off and give plenty of time for the next person who's coming on, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, those of you who are on Facebook Live, I believe we've had a very successful time of prayer. So I want to just take a moment and just give thanks to God for hearing us. I, I, I know God is hearing our prayers. I know he has heard us today. Lord, we thank you today 
that you are still the same prayer answering God that answered prayer in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, throughout church history. There, the example I read from 1739 with the early Methodists, how you you heard their prayers and you visited them mightily. And they saw a mass movement in England. They saw a mass movement of backslidden Christianity back to you. Lord, this is what we must see in Canada and America, Mexico, Central, South America, Europe, England, Ireland. And we pray, God, for such revival all over the world in India, Pakistan, Nepal, Africa, Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, the Congo. Oh, God, thank you for that promise of a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit in the last days. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are. And thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for allowing us to come together and pray like this today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a healing Jesus we have found in you, O oh Lord. And we are very thankful to you, O oh God. Thankful to you, O oh God, that you have made yourself known to us and we've come to know you as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, our desire is to daily come to know you more and more and more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. More, more about Jesus more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Yeah, that's what the world needs is more of Jesus. Hey, I'm Eddie Hyde. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if you would like to check out, I had mentioned Sue's book. Well, you can go to Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's also on our website at eddiehyatt.com. Um, 500 pages, very detailed. This originally came out of Sue's doctoral dissertation. So, I mean, she's, she's, she's made her case. Now, if you want something a little more light and uh, that, that actually just deals with one area, about pastors. Uh, I don't have a copy here in front of me, but uh, we have a, a book. I just finished it. I think it was earlier. It would have been last month, I guess. Who says women can't pastor? A lot of people are being greatly blessed by it. Who says women can't pastor? And uh, so it's, it's showing the biblical justification for women functioning in leadership roles in the, in the church, including that of pastor. So it's also available. It's much smaller, whereas this one's 500 pages. Mine is 107 pages. And uh, so they're both available on our website, eddiehype.com, and also at Amazon. I also encourage you to check out my uh, podcast. You might want to just scroll down, uh, and you'll find it there on, on Facebook. Uh, and, uh, hey, thank you for being our friends, being our partners, standing with us. We're believing God to do some great and mighty things in the coming days. And we'll be sharing with you more about that. In the meantime, if we can be a blessing to you, be in touch with us, you can uh, uh, send us an email. If you don't know our email, just go to my our website, my name, eddiehite.com. And there, a, a picture of Sue, a picture of me, our emails are on it. Or you can message us on Facebook. Um, you're welcome to uh, follow me on Twitter, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.